name is Dreadbread. Sorry about that. I am back. But uh, we're going to wait a few minutes to make sure everything is a okay. Let's see here. Alrighty. Gramarium, I fixed everything. I don't know why it went to the other uh, the other thing that it did. It wasn't supposed to do that. Oh, it says I am not streaming. This is buffering. Oh, let's close out of this. My channel. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the stream. Uh, please forgive me. I'm having some small technical difficulties, but I'm a little late to the party. As you can see here, it says, The hive mind finds less new ways to eat its enemies with the Von Ryan's Leaper. Now, some stuff came out about two days ago that I missed. Uh, typically, I don't do this kind of stuff because, in my opinion, there are way better and cooler people who do this stuff. But uh, I kind of wanted to throw my hand and give it a shot and also show off some, some cool things that are coming along to Warhammer. I'm going to be covering some Tyranids. Like my title said, there's going to be Tyranids, a lion, and some bolters. Ooh, scary. Um, I do want to make up a, um, not make up, but I want to uh, fix a mistake I've been saying. Uh, I keep saying the Astral Claws have come back with the um, Carcharodons, the Void Chapters. That's not what I meant to say. The Carcharodons had fought the <laughs> Astral Claws or Astral Lines. I don't remember in the Bad Ab War. And I'm, what I meant to say were the Ashen Claws. They both start with an A and they both end with a claw. They've come out of the void. So that is my that is my bad. My bad. So I forgive me about that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop on into it. Hopefully this doesn't mess up. All right. Let me see here. Ooh, I just need to move this a little bit down and out of the w Then it just killed my... Why did it do that? All right. So there's going to be a video that I'm going to be playing. <laughs> and uh, I have to turn off the music for it. Because the last time I put music on and I uploaded it to YouTube, some lamos false... Uh, ID claimed the content music as their own, which it was not their own. They lied about it. But anyway, let us read. We thought the new space move. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me start over. My mouth is a bit dry. We thought the new space marine lieutenant was stealthy, but he's just a product of decades of training and the art of subterfuge. By comparison, a new creature unleashed by the Tyranids has been spawned to evolve to become one of the galaxy's ultimate hunters. So apparently this Tyranid was mentioned in 3rd edition Codex. I did not come in until around the end of 7th ed. So I don't know anything about this Tyranid. Um, but it is it is cool that they are mentioning something that is quite old. I think it's... I don't even know when 3rd um, edition came out. Uh, it was a while ago. People said about 23 years or more. They're... People are kind of fighting about when it actually popped up um, over on Twitter. All I know is 3rd edition. Alrighty. So let me just pop this. I have to play these at the same time. One, two. Actually, can I... Well, that's built-in player. I don't want built-in player. I thought that was going to... I write the... Oh. I do that, then I can't. Hold, please. Yeah, I can't do it like that. Damn it. Because then I have to alt tab out to get my other player in here. Alrighty. So that kind of sucks. So I forgive me about this. I'm still new to this. Still new. Alrighty. Let's pop that back open then. We're going to play this. We're going to try to do this simultaneously. I don't know if it work. Oh, it, no, man. Scuff, 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 scuff. God. 
Maybe I should just start over or stop. I don't know. All right, let's. All right, let's try this again. Okay, that's what I was trying to do, but apparently this is really hard to do with one monitor, so I do apologize for all the scuff, but there you go. There is the new trailer for the new Von Ryan's Leaper. It is a um, Lecter, actually, which is pretty cool. We haven't seen Lecters for quite a while. Um, there was an old Lecter resin model that they did, which I kind of wanted to get my hands on at one point, but it was always sold out. Um, give me one moment. Lictors are like the ultimate predators of the the Tyranids. Um, there was one story about Lictor Chan, which I remember reading about. That was the, actually the first thing I ever heard about the Lictors was Lictor Chan. Uh, basically, it was a nickname for a Lictor that was. It was hunting down this, I don't, it's been so long, it, what, planetary governor or something like that, and it could turn invisible, and it would just kill his bodyguards. And then at night, when he'd lock himself in his room, it would creep into his room and just menacingly stare at him, like, it would decloak himself. And the guy, I believe he went insane, but it just, it kept doing it over and over and over again. But there we go. The hive mind has numerous ways of waging war, overwhelming the form foe with hordes of timber guns, melting bastions apart with living ar artillery of the Taro Tranofex, or ambushing them with more subtle fear inducing organi organisms such as the Lecter. Added to this list are the Von Ryan's Leapers. These creatures are the ultimate ambush predators. Though they are just as dangerous when jumping out from behind things that aren't bushes. And here we go. And this is the model here. Did you guys enjoy the nice scenery? Let's see if I can move this up a bit. Yes, so we'll go back to this one. I am I am so sorry. Like I said, I, this isn't my normal cup of tea. I know I had some people come in and then like leave because my scuff is really bad. But I'm really really quite liking these models these models are cool they're a bit of a fresh air um you could probably build these up to be just regular lifters too so there are those guys von Ry ryan's li 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 leap lepers leapers are swift agile and utterly lethal when the time is right they emerge to eviscerate their unfortunate enemies in a murderous fury as ambush predators, they have much in common with lictors, but rather than being lone wolves, these are pack hunters. Ooh, that's interesting. So lictors are solo, and these guys are pack hunters. So are they kind of come in packs of three then? Three to six, maybe? Very nice paint job. I really love that face. A face only a Timurgant uh, would love. Or the hive mind. There are still so many more of the Hive Mind's latest designs to show you. Sign up for the Thir Tyranid theme newsletter, yada yada, and go back to Warhammer for read more. Already! And then there's all this cool, all this old, old news. Sunday preview countdown to Christmas with the Crown, Clown, Crown Classics. Alrighty. So that was the Lictor that everybody's excited about and everybody's been talking about over on on Twitch and on YouTube and on Twitter let's go through these one more time like I said I normally don't do this so please forgive me for any of the scuff I'm using free music from slip.stream I always mess that up I always call it slipstream but that's something else completely there we go Ooh. alrighty I just have to change the Web page because when everything went scuffed, well, maybe I don't have to. Maybe Warhammer Community 
Let's go back. There we go. The battle has evolved. And a new, a new edition is coming for Warhammer 40,000. Some people are very excited about it. Some people are very mad and upset about it. They've been upset about Warhammer since the end of 7th edition because 8th edition streamlined things a little bit to make it faster. 9th edition kind of broke things and uh, broke certain armies. So a refresh was needed. Um, I, like I said in the, before in the past, I did not like how GW basically said that 9th edition was a prequel and lore wise to 8th edition so everything that built up in 8th edition just got swept underneath the rug and I feel like they're going to say that stuff didn't either happen or they're just going to let people to try to forget about it which many people have um, but a lot of cool stuff happened in 8th edition alright we're not going to be clicking on any of this stuff sending the lion how the Primarch got his name uh, Commander Dante did return he did get a new model we got some cool looking models here a guy with the volt Volt, uh, can't remember the name of the pistol. Voltite pistol, or maybe that's a plasma pistol. No, it's not a plasma pistol because it, well, it looks like it does have the coil. This is like the Mars attack gun. It shoots you and you get incinerated. Uh, we will be looking at the bolt gun. We'll be sharing that for last. But this is the stuff that I kind of wanted to do. So we got the lictors out of the way. Uh, the new Tyranids. And this is going to be a super super, super duper short stream. Um, we will do this one and then we will go into the rules for Lion Elo L. Johnson. So I cannot speak. People are going to probably butcher me. Like I said, I normally don't do this. Who's in the Galactic Smackdown that is in the Arse of Omen the Lion? Is this another video? No, this is actually a really cool piece of art. You can't go a Viking around the galaxy, smashing and grabbing from a secure Imperial outpost without making a few enemies. Vashtor now has some pretty big names coming for him as the Arcs of Omen series reaches its climax. So before Arcs of Omen, the lion goes up before pre-order this weekend. We're taking a moment to root through our galaxy rogues gala gallery and see who the major players are heading into the story so we got this guy here he is new he wants to become from what i understand a um a new chaos god as a central figure to the whole saga vashtor with his talons and many pies oh has his talons and many pies. i'm sorry the search for the key fragment has been fruitful thanks to his alliance with Abaddon the Despoiler. And despite setback on the rock, he is not high in spirits. Now he has retreated, retreated to a far-flung corner of the galaxy to begin his real work. The dark angels are hot on his hooves, but could it be that Archifane looks forward to their arrival? Whatever he saw aboard the rock must be important to his plans. And machining it to be delivered to his doorstep is kind of a scheme that only the intensely analytical demon lord can conduct so like i said i don't know much about this guy but this is a very very nice piece of art um i very much on the fence on how they've been writing their articles i, I this right here you can't go viking around the galaxy I, I, some of this stuff could have been could have been written better um it just don't like it and then we have abaddon the despoiler so he's been around for a long time if you're new to warhammer he is kind of like the big baddie of baddies but i do believe his time is coming to a close i believe that his legion the the was black legion my brain is fried i had a very long day so so all you warhammer nerds Go ahead, crucify me for getting lore and stuff wrong. I've worked a very long day. Um, but like I said, I, I do believe the Black Legion is going to be put on the back burner because from what I understand, the Red Corsairs, who which were the Astral Claws, yes, the Astral, Astral Claws from the Bad Dab War, um, their, their leader is still alive. And their numbers are outgrowing the Black Legion. So I, I do believe that 
the Red Corsairs are going to take over this place and just kind of throw a new, fresh face to be the bad guys. I, I still think Abaddon will be a bad guy, but I think he'll be put on the back burner and then have pretty much a lesser role. Though loath to consort directly with the Demonkin, Abaddon the Despoiler has experienced has enough experience to come out on top of bargain. Of any bargain, God, I cannot read tonight. The Arcs of Omen have ravaged the Imperium so badly it is already pretty. Uh, it's already a pretty big win, and Vashator has promised him much more should the key be assembled. For now, Abaddon's vengeful spirit wait. Abaddon and the vengeful spirit wait in the wings, ready to take advantage of whatever development arises. Demons and Hubris go together like tea and biscuits. If Akinfrain bites off more than he can chew, Abaddon won't stick around to pay his tab. Then we have Supreme Grand Master Azriel. It's also really nice artwork. Azriel, only known, defended the only known. God, that's narrowly defended the rocks in the arcs of Omen Vashtor, and vengeance is on his mind. A, caption, a captured traitor revealed the whereabouts of Vashtor's headquarters, and though the information is suspect, suspect, is sus, the Supreme Grand Master can't afford to waste it. Ezreal has gathered the full might of the unforgiven, far-flung chapters, heeding his call as the Dark Angels assemble one, mightiest, one of the mightiest fleets in record Recent history, not record history. The rock is its as its center. So why does Vashit? Why does oh God? Whatever. I cannot read. I'm having the very bad night. I apologize. So why does it feel like Vashitor wants things to, for this to happen? What trump could, card could he possibly hold that would warrant the ire of an entire space marine legion? Oh, really? All right, so the entire Legion is after him. Not just the Dark Angels chapter, but the entire Legion. All right. Commander Dante, he's back from a very, very long nap. And he is fighting Angron, the angriest boy right here. Um, I do like the Blood Angels. I had a feeling that they might have killed him off, or will kill him off eventually, because he's he is considered one of the oldest or older living space marines i mean he wasn't around when sanguinius and all of them were alive or, or up and about uh, they might bring back sanguinius but i doubt it that would kind of defeat the purpose of what happened but anyway next one to re well never one to relax commander dante has leapt from the crossing of the rubicon primaris to a wide-ranging investigation aboard the Arcs of Omen. Wait, he's left from crossing the Rubicon Primaris. Is that a planet? It's a wide-ranging investigation aboard. Okay. While the night terror bore down on the vener venerable Argy world, Dante moved to intercept, but found the ship completely devoid of life. All that remained were piled of corpses of its heretics, Astartes crews, slain by Bolter bolt gun and blade the faith the faint traces of ethereal plant life oh okay so well, that's interesting the blood angels have finally trained clean it train train whatever they pinpointed the point of manifestation of the next appearance only the emperor knows what they'll find though many have guessed yeah it's angron they found angron angry boy the angriest of prime marks. The big, big meanie man. And then, obviously, at the end, we have Lion L. Johnson. My voice is starting to get hoarse, so I just wanted to show off the art real quick because I thought the art on this was actually amazing. And you can actually download these and use these as... The wallpapers, because that's what they're supposed to be used for. We already know about the lion, because the lion is coming back. He was in the the video, the last stream that I did, uh, showcasing the Adapticon stuff. 
We know he's coming back, what ex but where exactly will he appear? And will he be here in time to stop whatever dark designs Vashdor has for the galaxy? Obviously, since Ninth was a prequel to, to Eighth, this is this has already happened. So the line's out there somewhere. We just don't know where. And we don't know what he's been up to until this all comes into play. Basically, you'll have to get to the book and find out. Or you can just wait until all that stuff is revealed. Uh, we will do this one. My voice is giving out. I'm sorry this is going to be such a short, short stream. Um, I do apologize. This stream has not gone how I planned it to go at all. Put the forces of chaos to the sword with free rules for Lionel Johnson. Some say he's a ten-foot giant. Others claim he's a paragon of ancient and foreboding gene-smithing. And others still proclaim him a forest-born wild man, uplifted from the Emperor's grace. Oddly enough, they're almost all correct. And that just goes to show how powerful the legend of the lion truly is. So he is a mix of, of a lot of different mythical, mythical people. So Richard the Lionheart and um, King Arthur. I like his two little... Two little Jawa guys here. Utini. Anyway, <clears throat> such a singular figure needs rules to match. Now Lion L. Johnson delivers. We are already had a sneak peek at his rules. Now it's time to download the data sheet so you can do it. You can download the data sheets here. And if you guys are interested, you just go to Warhammer Community. You can download the data sheets for free. If you thought he was power enough. Uh, do us already we have good news there isn't a single creature alive that can stand up to the lion's mix of speed and skill so naturally he fights first in any combat a daunting prospect for anyone who has to face down 20 attacks and he goes first no matter what the martial exemplar at the start of the fight phase if this model is in with in engagement range of enemy units it can fight first that phase. Oh, it can. It doesn't always get to. You can pick if you want to fight first. He's also not alone. Oh, he's also not one to let things s such as random chance get in the way of his good heretic kicking. <laughs> so the Primarch of the First Legion aura lets him re-roll all hit wounds and will wound rolls of one. So if you roll a hit roll of one, you can re-roll it. And if you roll a wound roll wound roll of one you can re-roll it if you've not played the game before you take some d6 dice you roll them and if you roll ones they're misses but like it like it this says it's pretty self-explanatory primark or the first legion aura while a friendly dark angels core or dark angels character unit is within six inches of this model each time the model in that uh, unit makes an attack roll Reroll a hit roll of one and reroll a wound roll of one. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So other units get that too. Finally, two watchers in the dark on the base are more than just bell hoops or bell hops. Sorry, bell hoops. Like I said, it's been a long day. I'm having the, my eyes are having the trouble focusing. I'm having trouble speaking. It's been a long day. Their strange powers help the lion wheel, ward off ooh, psychic powers. The mysterious retainers are especially good at denying chaos magics, but each will attempt each attempt will burn one of the poor little guys out, so choose wisely. Okay, so these guys well, they're not in the picture here, which stinks. Well these little guys These guys are like small little tokens and when you use them boom they're you know you get they die so upon twice per battle this model can attempt to deny the witch as if it were a psyker if the model if the model attempting to manifest the uh, psychic power is a chaos psyker you can re-roll that deny witch t test okay so there's probably more rules to this um, because it said that But each attempt will burn one of the poor little guys. So they probably 
have a limit on how many, how many times they can do that. At 320 points for the whole exciting package, he sits. Okay, so he's 320 points. All right. Unless you're a mutant, alien, or het heretic, and this is and this is very bad news. Yes, this is quite interesting. Um, I do believe there's going to be some beef between Gilliman and the Lion, and possibly another not horse heresy, but another maybe split um not necessarily certain not necessarily certain space marines chapters falling to chaos but them one group of you know chapters siding with the lion while others will cite with um gilman and i will that's probably going to weaken the imperium of man and maybe it leads to some more skirmishes between the the two factions but that's just you know that's just what I'm thinking because Gilliman and the Lion um, I know they kind of get along but at the same time all the Primarchs kind of butt their heads um, I think at one point not really up on my lore as I should be I'm only on book two of the Horus Heresy but from everything I've, I've learned um, from just reading stuff the, I think at one point they wanted Sanguinius, I think, was supposed to be the, the Primarch or the Pri... I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm just rambling. Ignore me. And here's the bread of the butter of what I wanted to show you. Bolt Gun. The new Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun trailer is out as voice actor Rahal Kahali reveals how he got into character. So it comes out May 23rd, which is really cool. Um, this is kind of a boomer shooter, as you can see from the graphics. Doom-esque. Ooh, there is the voice actor, and that is his character. Very, very cool. Ooh, that's some very nice art right there, as he's shooting down Black Legion with some of those purple terrors around him. Uh, Bolt Gun will come out on Steam, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Very cool, but we're going to play the trailer. Um, this part, if I upload it, is probably going to get hit with a copyright ID claim for music from bogus creators, but I don't care. Here we go. We're going to watch it. <laughs> Very awesome! Die heretics! Shred! Purge! Oh, gross! Very, very cool. Oh, we don't need to do that again, thank you. The 40th anniversary of Warhammer has been filling us with nostalgia, and the new trailer for Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun is only making things better. This is a glorious, retro pulse pounding first person shooter where you play as a Space Marine, a one man army gunning through pixelated heretic hordes. Don't just take our word for it. Watch the trailer right here, which we did. This awesome game lets us experience the ultimate homage to retro shooters, blending 80s style visuals with fluid modern FPS gameplay and you won't have to wait long to play it. It's out May 23rd, which I've already said. Someone else is just in the same as, as we are, is Rahul Kohili. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, actor and devout Ultramarines fan. But unlike us, Rahul was asked by the developers of Auroch Digital to voice the main character. We sat down for a chat to find out what he said it was like to play Space Marine. The folks at RH Digital got in contact with my team and asked if I'd be interested in doing the voicing of the pro protagonist, Rahul said. I immediately said yes, and why not? Space Marines are awesome, um, but why Ultramarines? Everything is Ultramarines. Give <laughs> glory to another chapter. There's a definitely a particular voice style that the Space Marines have across the various forms of media. 
before recurring sessions, I was sent a Warhammer Bible, which has the do's and don'ts for portraying such a character. That is interesting. I wonder if that is something they send out to everybody that does Warhammer stuff. And I'm glad they do that. <laughs> because Warhammer has, is such a big universe and there's so much lore and so much things that it is it's important to make Warhammer feel like Warhammer and not some kind of generic setting um, with kind of modern lingo and slang. Luckily, there's a wealth of Warhammer media out there, so finding inspiration wasn't too hard. I watched Angles of Death, Ruhal explained, and I recently played through Space Marine. That is a very good game. That is an excellent game. So I had good vocal reference. This is almost regular or almost regal or Shakespeare uh, tonality way to speak. That is very true with Space Marines. Yes, that is accurate. I just wore an Ultramarines t-shirt, some heavy boots, and blasted my lines in the mic and crossed my fingers. Very cool. Rahal is re relatively new to the 40 Warhammer 40,000, having picked up his first uh, box in January of 2022, but it's still a dream role for him. I feel incredibly lucky to be a part of the Warhammer universe, said Rahul. I only recently became a fan and it has chosen my chapter, the Ultramarines, because I'm a sucker for the art, box art. Yep, that is very true. That's how a lot of people pick their armies is by the art. The rule of cool. Over the past year or so, I found the community to be so welcoming. That is also very true. Despite all the people that screech into the void that is Twitch, the Warhammer community is actually very welcoming and they are a very nice group of people. There's just a few people that would try to be, would be dictators and assholes who are more like I really hate to use this word, but it's a word that a lot of people use, which is hobby tourists. They come in, you know, they're just kind of on a tour bus touring the hobby, saying they're a part of the hobby when they're not. That's a, but that's another topic for another time. T to have voiced an ultramarine in a first-person shooter, I mean, I've kind of peaked. It definitely feels like the perfect project. And as you can see... He's shooting the heretics right there. So I did watch, somebody did get to play the demo for this a little bit early. I do like the guy's channel. Um, and he said, when you are doing the chain sword, the more you hold it down, the more damage it does. But you can also like use it to rapidly hit things too. So you don't actually have to hold it down and, and chow through that guy like he's metal butter. An avid painter, uh, Rahul has convinced Oh, converted his own model of Mel Malum Kando, the Ultramarines veteran that he voices in the game, based on parts of the Stern Guard veteran kits. It looks almost identical to the awesome art that accompanies. Ooh, that accompanies the game. That's very cool that he did that. He's got the beaky helmet. Very cool. He did a really good job. Way better than what I can do. That's, that's really awesome. Yeah, there's the art for it. That is very awesome. And it's not the only project Radukul is working on. I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. Uh, that's, not, that's not what I'm trying to do. I have an insurmountable task of painting up my Ultramarines. Some Kill Team sets, my dark, dark Age of Darkness box, the Canadian... Uh, <laughs> Canadia. Yes, yeah, Space Canadia. Stan's army test, some Leagues of Voltan, and some countless others I snatched up immediately are now sitting in a cupboard. Awesome. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yes, unfortunately, Space Canada has fallen. Um, that's not Space Canada. I just can't. I can't speak tonight. Man, I cannot speak tonight. And that's all I wanted to show off um, just for now. I just wanted to do a little, a little stream. And there was so much scuff. I butchered so much stuff. Oh, my my throat is killing me. I've mumbled on or rambled on long enough. I am so sorry. So, so sorry. But, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Thank you all those who, who uh, stopped on by. 
I checked off the stream. That's all I wanted to show off right now. 35 minutes of streaming. My voice is dead. I have I don't feel like I did this justice. I'm sorry. I tried. I really did. So let's go over here to just chatting for a bit. And let's see if there's somebody that I can raid. I always mess this up. I really do. I always mess this up. All right. First of all, I need to get out of this. Boom. Um, like I said, the music was from Slipstream. It was not from Warhammer. So they cannot... They, they cannot uh, try to false ID claim the music. I don't know why they did that. I, I really don't know why that that those guys did that anyway. That was it must have been a bot or whatever. I did fight the I'm fighting the appeal and they're not gonna do anything. They're just gonna let the appeal sit there and after thirty days I'll get my videos I mean they're not gone, but I'll get the copyright IDs claim stuff off of them. Which is a load of bull. That's what a lot of fraudulent companies will do. Because those videos were doing those videos were doing very well. Um they will do that to try to put ads on the video and stuff like that. But no, I fought them. So they can't put ads on the video and they cannot get any revenue for those videos on YouTube. Not that I my videos are monetized anyway. Let's see here. Let Okie dokie. Artemachoki. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Alright. I have a tendency to mess this up, but we're going to raid Gizmo Cat. Go have fun. Be nice. <laughs> 